Have you ever gone through something in life and you found yourself saying, man, I wish someone could have told me. I wish someone could have told me don't go down that road. I wish someone could have told me this ain't what you want to do. I wish someone would have told me something. <laughs> if you are a human being who has lived more than probably 10 years on this earth, there is a high chance that you would answer yes for that. And, uh, you know, for some reasons, a little bigger or more serious than others. Uh, so I am going to get into the, I wish someone could have told me. And I also want to hear yours. We'll get into that later. But first, if you are new here, I want to say welcome. If you're not new here, hello. It is so good to see you again. <laughs> it's been a while. I have been taking time to, I am healed and I'm healing. Uh, that is a phrase that I've kind of, I've adapted at this point because I'm healed from so many different things and I am still healing. And I believe in this uh, process of us being transformed uh, to be more like Christ, we will always be getting greater, getting better, more healing, more deliverance, more freedom, all the great things. So <laughs> I don't look at it now like, oh, I'm not quite where I want to be. I look at it like this is a process that I am enjoying uh, as God is enjoying it with me, walking through it with me. So welcome to this channel. I will be here more and I will be here more, uh, just a disclaimer, I will be here more showing up as myself. Uh, so one of the things that I have uh, deconstructed within myself and I'm in the process of like going after it with Holy Ghost fire and a bulldozer and just like everything to get it out is religion. I love God. I love Jesus Christ. Uh, but religion, Jesus didn't even like religion. Like religion is no good. And one of the things that religion teaches is how you have to perform to get something from God when he loves us just as we are and he loves every part of us. And I'm saying that because, you know, at first this was just going to be an educational channel uh, just to give educational uh advice so to speak on narcissism and to also ex ex share some of my experiences but i would find a conflict within myself with that because there's so much more to me and so much more to this story than just you know gaslighting and flying monkeys and all of the terms and all the things that come with it uh and so I've just made the decision that I am going to show all the parts. So the good and the bad good. Uh, I heard Dr. Myron Golden say that and I love it. He says that everything, even things that are bad are technically good because all things work together for our good if we love God and we are called according to his purpose. That's Romans 8, 28. And so that brings me to what I'm about to talk about today. I was in the shower preparing for worship. And uh, as I prepare for worship, I am often emptying myself out. Like, you know, so I'm not taking any of that uh, before people, before God's people as we worship God together. And so I was emptying myself out while also kind of like emptying the thoughts. And so one of my thoughts was about this channel and I was thinking of this series that I am going to start on Instagram and it's called, I wish I knew, or I wish someone would have told me, I wish someone would have told me. And uh, I thought about that Moesha music where y'all know this, if y'all like from the nineties period, uh, dun, dun, dun. was she writing in her diary? Don't judge me. If you know, you know though. <laughs> to say all the things that I wish I knew while writing to that music, right? So, you know, a whole thing. And so as I'm in the shower, though, praying for, you know, emptying myself out to prepare to worship, uh, the idea came back in my head and it just started with, I wish I knew his mother was a part of the plan. And immediately I'm like, ooh. <laughs> Oh, 
Because you know, when you are healed and healing, sometimes you don't want to go back to those places, honestly. And and I had to, if I'll be really honest, I had to deal with, with myself. And because I'm in such a better place, there is a lot where I'm like, that's history. Like, and I see it as a, a, a place in history. And I don't want to go back. I don't want to talk about it. Like, I'm good. All is well. And looking forward, first of all, just excited about the present. Looking forward to the future. Uh, so no thank you, please. <laughs> but I realized that to a degree that can be an act of selfishness. If there is something that I can share with someone else who has went through what I went through or to, to prevent someone else from going through what I went through, why wouldn't I open my mouth? And so in saying that, oh, so if you are not familiar with parts of my story that I shared some time ago now, uh, at age 13, I uh, met a assistant teacher who became my husband four days after I turned 18. A lot happened before that. Uh, and his mother though, that, that's where I'm getting to. His mother was very instrumental in getting me even to feel safe with dating a man, dating. I don't even know if you can really use that word because again, I'm 14, 15, 16 years old and he was, you know, 22 and older. But she was the, she was the main one, one of the main ones who was involved. And uh, I remember being in the, I met her when I was in the ninth grade as well. A lot of us, a lot of the young people who uh, we were in his choir, he had a, what was it called? Called a group. It was a group called Highly Favored. And it was a gospel choir where we would then go to his church. It was his grandmother's church at the time. We would go there and we would have choir rehearsals. And the thing is, before these choir rehearsals, we would have Bible study and prayer. Like, I remember one specific lesson being about, it was from Hebrews, and it was about laying aside the weight, the, the sin and the weight that so easily beset you. Like, he would preach a, a very strong message of holiness and how, as we were uh, psalmist and prophetic teenagers and stuff, we were to live holy lives before God. And he also talked a lot about how he was uh, molested as a child, as a young child, and how he was just so against it and stuff. So he made us, and when I say us, I'll, I'll talk about me specifically, I felt safe. And his mom was right there with, with him through the whole thing. Uh, his mom was also, by the time I was in ninth grade, uh, that April, we went to do a live recording from Rochester, New York. We went to Atlanta, Georgia, and I rode with his mom. And I mean, by the time we got home from that trip, I remember him coming to the school and telling me like, whoa, my mom thinks you're the, the nicest thing since sliced bread or the best thing since sliced bread or something like that. And I'm like, oh, wow, nice. Uh, and I am the oldest child. I have always enjoyed hanging out with older women, always like, Listen, sit me by a grandmother and baby, we're going to talk and we're going to have a good time. Okay. Like a good time. <laughs> I uh, was blessed. I still have one grandmother who is here in the land of the living. And I was blessed with four amazing grandparents who loved me so much. Like for real, I'm not going to say I'm their favorite because you know, they got a lot, a lot of favorites that they love, but you know, I was one of the favorites period. Uh, and so I, I just always had a thing for older people and even not much older, like grandparents older, but even just like older sister type thing, right? And so this woman, she literally, I remember her giving me clothes. She would take me uh, shopping and really acting like a, I won't say a mother figure because I didn't look, I never looked to her as that. It was more like a bigger sister type thing, although she is technically older than my, my mother. And so I'm saying that to say, there were so many times I was at her house. There were so many times. I even remember once I got to the 10th grade, I played this role as Diana Ross 
for uh, we had a Motown review that her son was in charge of. Her son, who I then later married, uh, who was my abuser, uh, he was in charge of it. And I just remember how she took such interest in me and playing that role. And I think she gave me like a piece of jewelry. Just there was just so much interest in me. And I didn't know it then, but it was a part of the grooming. Later, I realized actually it was around 11th grade. I remember him saying to me that his mother told him that he liked me. Now, I'm in 11th grade at this time. I am 16 years old because I did graduate a year early. So I'm 16 years old. He is <laughs> nine years older than that. He's a teacher at the school. And this woman of God, right? Because she had the church and stuff with us too. She there praying and stuff too, you know? Uh, she is telling him that he likes me from what he said, right? Uh, do I believe it? Yes, because they have a very sick relationship. So I, I do believe it. And unfortunately, she had a lot of uh, very scandalous things going on at that time as well. And so it's a thing. <laughs> you would think these things don't happen in church, right? And from the world I come out of, like stuff like this is taboo. From the world I came from, like, Adults are adults, kids are kids, <laughs> you know, right is right, wrong is wrong, even if some of them are wrong. So this is something that still now, I'm still wrapping my mind around it like, whoa. So she was, really, wow. And so I'm saying that all to say, I wish someone would have told me that his mama wasn't safe. I wish someone would have told me that his mom was a part of the plan. He later told me when we were married, like, you know, my mom wouldn't have had a problem if, if, if I, she don't have a problem with anything I do. If I was gay, she would be fine with that too. And you know, that's, that's their relationship. But I'm saying that to say like to uphold your son in something that is so wrong, it's not right. Like there's nothing right about it. And then to put God in it all, there is nothing right about it. I'm saying that to say, people are not, everybody isn't who you think they are. And I wish I knew that as well. <laughs> I wish I knew that just because someone holds the Bible, just because someone preaches from the Bible, just because someone may even be preaching what is right from the Bible, it doesn't mean that they're living it. And so later on, they're gonna use this Bible and they're gonna use their prophetic gifts or, or divination to uh, get you to believe that they are on God's side. So then when later on, they start flipping it to God is saying, you two should be married, you'll then, you'll then just fall right into it. You'll then be groomed to be like, oh, okay, yeah, because this must be the plan of God. And even though I don't want it, but they've already told me in a few Bible studies how we don't always like God's plan. And that is something that is true. But I wish I knew that people would take truth and mix it with a little bit of lie. Just like uh, with poison, rat poison. It is like 93, maybe even 96%. Good, good ingredients. The three, the four percent is what kills. I wish I knew. I wish I knew. So with that being said, uh, later in life, later once we got married, and I was no longer the little girl that could be controlled, I became a threat to this mother as well. So I knew nothing about narcissism. I knew nothing about the spirit of Jezebel or like the Leviathan. Well, I started learning about Jezebel. It was interesting because God kept highlighting to me Jezebel. I kept getting books and different things on Jezebel and still had pretty much no clue that uh, I was sleeping with Jezebel. I'm like, oh, yeah, I didn't really, didn't really catch that one. <laughs> I was thinking like, oh, okay, Lord, you know, we're pastoring a church. So a Jezebel in the church and, and it was, and was, and was. I also didn't know that when you are prophetic or a prophet, Jezebel is always somewhere looking for you. But it's fine because um, maybe I got, I got something for Jezebel. So it's fine. And God always equips you to handle it. 
um, and to handle her and where, however she comes, however the spirit comes, I didn't know. I wish someone would have told me <laughs> that the whole thing about, not the whole thing, but where the word of God tells us we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. I wish someone would have told me to believe more of my spirit, what God is telling me in my spirit than what I'm seeing with my eyes. I wish someone would have told me don't gaslight myself because what they're saying isn't matching what I'm what I'm hearing from from God. What I'm hearing from the spirit of God on the inside of me. Don't gaslight yourself, Renee, because you know, you'll say, "Oh, no, don't be judgmental because they were telling you you were judgmental in the very beginning because they just needed your guards down." Even though you were a child <laughs> they still needed to break the child's guards down because the child had a prophetic, well, the child was born a prophet. And so she was hearing God clearly, but they kept saying, no, no, that's not what that is. No. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just, I just wish someone would have told me, trust God in you. Uh, so yeah, with that being said, once the little girl couldn't be controlled anymore, that mother then turned on me. When I say turned on me, and I'll give those stories later, because we got time. We got time. We're going to get to know each other real good. <laughs> but more than knowing the stories, I'm thankful to the God who causes us to always triumph, the God who causes us to overcome. I'm thankful that even as I share this, there's not a piece of bitterness in me. There's not a piece of resentment in me. There's not a piece of unforgiveness in me. I'm teaching this to help other people. I'm teaching this because they overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And I remember writing a book in 2016. And in 2016, I had no idea that this would be my story now, right? And my story isn't over. God is still writing it. Well, it's already written. I'm walking it out. Uh, but then I was telling a testimony and I remember saying, it's up to us for what side of the testimony we want to be on in somebody's life. How do you treat people? Like you determine how you show up in someone's testimony. If they're telling the truth, you determine that by how you treat them. So make sure you're on the good side of someone's testimony. So I'm saying that to say that she then turned on me because she couldn't control me. She could, couldn't, I wouldn't go with the okie doke. I'm like, no, this is wrong. No, that is wrong. No, you can't just treat people any kind of way at the church because you're the pastor's mother. That is wrong. I don't treat people any kind of way here because that is not what we're here for. Like, that's not God. That's not Christ-like. Like, no, you can't just sleep with whoever you want to and still come and, you know, like, rule over people. That's not, we don't, we don't do that here. <laughs> like, no. And for those reasons, for me standing up for righteousness in the church with the mom, she then turned on me. And I mean, when I say turned on me, there were things that she did that were like very, very detrimental. Fast forward to now, it has been over five years. Well, five years now since I have seen her, spoken to her. I did reach out when I originally left her son just out of respect for the fact that she was, you know, my children's biological grandmother and my daughter didn't know her. My son, he was one at the time. He had seen her maybe, he had seen her once at that, at that point in time. And so, but I reached out to her, uh, just asking her via text message, uh, you know, how are you? Uh, we would like to see you. Uh, is there a time where you can come? I even offered to buy her a plane ticket from Rochester, New York to Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, and she said, well, I have to check and see if I have uh, time off. She was a school, working in the school. So I had the summer off and this was summertime. Uh, and then she never wrote back. And it's okay. My children are well. Uh, I know that their life is better without her in it. And I don't say that to be facetious. I don't say that to be funny. Uh, but what I will say is I did have to walk my daughter who was eight. So she knew her. I mean, that was her Nana. I had to walk her through healing from that. And so I wish I knew that people could be so evil. People who profess Jesus Christ <laughs> and titles and all these other things, 
you can be so evil as to not be a part of your biological grandchild's life because your son was an evil master manipulator and child molester. I wish I knew that I could be the enemy because I stood up for what was right. Because when I found out that those people were molested, no, it's not okay. No, I'm not gonna stand for it. Yes, I'm leaving. Well, I had already left when I found that out. And then, ta-da, I get to about 30 years old and I'm like, wait a minute. I was technically a victim too, not just of abuse in a marriage, but oh, this man grew me too. Wow, okay. I wish I would have known. So I know that was a lot that I shared real quick on the fly. <laughs> like I said, we gonna know each other real good. And here's the thing, y'all. The amazing thing is God always causes us to overcome and to triumph. Did I have times that I was mad? Let me tell y'all, I was peed off, okay? Peed, peed off to the highest level of festivity at times, okay? I had to think about it because although, again, although I didn't want them in my kids' lives, although I knew, like, I saw her do some crazy stuff, inappropriate stuff, that I knew she would never, like, she wasn't even allowed to have my kids alone because I saw how she was with other people's kids. And I'm like, oh, y'all got some sick stuff going on. I just wish I would have known. Um, so I'm glad they're not in their lives. But I wish I would have known that they would be flipping a narrative to be like, oh, well, it was her because she was always stuck up or she was always this or that or on a high horse. Baby, a high horse? A high horse? Because I don't think it's okay to molest people's kids. That's not a high horse. That's standing for what's right. And more people need to stand for what's right and stop turning a blind eye. It's not okay. No. Like, if you want to be with a man, go be with a grown man. Be with a grown woman leave people's kids alone and that includes their teenagers like leave them alone because you're taking us to youth group praying for us and then you're molesting people in the car on the way home that's not okay and i remember an activist from my city when the documentary went up she put up on her wall his mama ought to be in jail too and i remember someone screenshotting and sending it to me and i'm like oh yeah i know her she's actually like family and it hit me like whoa they're right. She's right. She really should. So um, saying that to say, God is amazing. He is such a healer. He's a restorer. And he just has a way, because I was telling you guys, I don't want to say that I was not ever angry. I was. Um, I was very, very angry. Like, thank God I didn't see any of these people in the street or, or not like I, I was angry and and I'm saying that too like I'm gonna be honest because in the documentary I had already healed and gotten to a place that was times of I had walked through deliverance <laughs> deliverance with several different uh deliverance ministers okay I walked through courts of heaven prayers I walked through prayer fasting talking to a bishop every other day uh, who, who was safe for me at that time. You know what I mean? So in, in, in a very good for accountability at that time. But no, there were times where I wanted to flip out. Okay. Cause I, I thought about stuff as an adult and I was like, wait, and that happened and that happened. Oh yeah. Now I'm about to go blow something up, but thanks be unto God. And I'm saying that because if you do find yourself in a place where it's like, uh Oh, I'm angry. I'm mad. Like, be angry, sin not. <laughs> right? Uh, be angry, sin not. So be angry. Find that safe person you can call and you can just, you know, let it all out with. And then find yourself on your face talking to your God who will rescue you, who will help you, who will walk you through. He'll walk you through. Uh, the testimony would not have been as powerful had I got on here in anger had I got on here before even healing so many people would not have been healed through hearing my story because I would have been coming from a different place so I just want to encourage you if you are in that place of anger from, from thinking about the I wish someone would have told me <laughs> it's okay 
but walk through it, get through it. You can get through it with God holding your hand. And it's okay to be angry. God isn't happy about the things that have happened to you. Let's be very clear. God gets angry about those things. Be angry, sin not. Move through the anger with God and with the help of God, with the love of God. So I want you to write in the comments what is one, or you can even give me three, three, I wish someone would have told me, dot, dot, dot. I want to hear from you. I plan to comment back or I may even share them, uh, not with your names and stuff, unless you want me to, but I may even share some of them on my Instagram as well. So I want to hear from you. What are some things you wish someone would have told you? So until next time, abundant blessings.